Well, hello to everyone on YouTube. This is Alec, also known as Edison Phono One, and today I have a series of videos for you comparing the Keurig K cup system to the standard drip coffee maker. As you probably saw in the title, the purpose of this video is to help you determine if the Keurig K cup system is right for you. In this video, I'm going to compare the two systems on their physical appearance of the machines and their performance in terms of how fast can they make coffee, as well as their energy consumption and environmental impact. That will be a part two video. And in part three, I'll talk about the price and selection of the coffee for each system. Another thing that I'm going to go over in the performance section of this video is I'm going to compare the models on their reliability. Curie K-Cup systems, by default, have more complex parts in them because of the way they operate, whereas your standard drip coffee maker generally only has one part that can break. And I'll talk about that more in the performance section. But basically, this is going to be a three-part video because I want to go into these parts in detail instead of, and I don't want to have one giant video, I'd rather have three smaller ones. And to make things easier for you, I'm going to compile this as a playlist and I'll put an annotation at the end of each video that will take you to the next one. So without further ado, let's talk about each system's physical appearance. Now, I want to clarify, I'm not comparing this Keurig model, which is a B40, to this coffee maker from Rival. The reason why is because they both have features that the other ones don't. So I don't want to say, well, this one's better than the other. However, they have serious differences between all regular coffee makers and all Curie coffee makers. Mainly that is their physical attractiveness. Curie coffee makers have a wide stance. They kind of seem impressive looking. And in general, it's something that looks nice on your countertop. The classic handle that opens up the compartment for the K-cup it's a nice thing, it seems to be a cultural thing now, as well as the Keurig name. These, like I said, they're impressive looking units and they seem to fit well on your countertop. While as your regular coffee maker, maybe not so pretty, generally you can't get away with having the large carafe that will hold the coffee. It might be smaller depending on if it's a smaller coffee maker, and a brew basket to put the actual coffee grounds in. Now this particular model is actually quite small for a 12 cup coffee maker. You can see the carafe is actually larger than parts of it at the bottom. And there are indeed prettier 12 cup coffee makers. But my point is that you can't get around having the large glass carafe and something at the top to put the brew basket in. In general they're going to have this shape. Now again I don't want to compare features because just how this has auto off you can find regular coffee makers that have auto off. Just how some Keurig brewers have timed startups, you have some regular coffee makers that have timed brews. So really, I don't want to compare them on those two features. However, what I will say is an important distinction between the two of them is their methods of operation. Now the Keurig system is a single serve coffee system, which means it makes one cup of coffee at a time. The way it would work is you open it and you put in a K-cup pack and we'll show you a little bit more about that later and then you close it and it will run pressurized water through the coffee grounds in the K-cup and then it will go into your cup at the bottom. Now the other coffee maker simply has water that travels to the top and then it kind of seeps its way through the coffee that has a filter at the bottom and then it comes out the bottom. But one thing that this regular coffee maker can do that the Keurig cannot is it can make a large quantity of coffee and keep it warm. This might be good for you if you're someone who drinks a lot of coffee in the morning, say two or three cups, because you can make the coffee at once and then just pour it into a cup as you go along. Now the Keurig system is nicer if you, only have, if you only make one cup of coffee in the morning because you just stick your cup under there and it puts it straight into the cup as opposed to having to pour it from the carafe into the cup and then clean out the carafe. So there's definite situations where the Keurig makes more sense than the Rival and the Rival makes more sense than the Keurig. And that's why I'm making this video because depending on your family or just your living situation, how much coffee you drink, one system might be worth it and the other system might not be. So anyway, so now we'll move along to the actual performance and what I mean is how fast can each machine make two cups of coffee. So let's get going. One of the first things we need to do before we make a comparison on speed is find out what each coffee maker considers a normal cup of coffee. The Keurig system produces eight ounce cups of water when you just run water through it. So to compare how long it takes to make two cups of coffee in each system, I've placed 16 ounces of water in the reservoir of the drip coffee maker. This is the mark for two cups, and you can see it's somewhat between two and four cups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my iPad, and the reason why I'm using that is because it's very visible in the video. 
and will time how long it takes for this coffee maker to pass 16 ounces of water through its system. I'm going to add one minute to it to count for the time it takes to put grounds into a filter and get the brew basket ready. Now this is somewhat arbitrary, but I feel that if, you've in, if you're into the rhythm of making coffee in the morning, you can pretty much get that done very quickly. So to get started, I'll turn this around forward and I will turn the machine on as well as start the stopwatch. One of the things about these traditional coffee makers is they start making coffee very quickly. You can see it's already putting water into the pot and it's only 15 seconds into this. I'll post a link in the description about how these coffee makers work because it's actually pretty pretty interesting. The engineer guy had a video to explain why these coffee makers can be made so inexpensively. Alright, it's at 2 minutes and 30 seconds and it just stopped producing water through the system. Now in a traditional now if we were using coffee it would probably take a little longer for it to stop actually dripping because of the coffee in the grounds. But regardless we have 2 minutes and 30 seconds as our time for the water to pass through. So now I'll get the curing machine over here and we'll see how long it takes for it to both warm up and make 2 cups of coffee. Okay so to compare the curing system now to the standard coffee maker what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on when I press start. Now it's probably going to heat up just a tad faster than it would normally and I'll let you know if that's the case in an annotation later in case uh, I do time it again. And that's because I actually had a small mishap with it and I have turned it on in the past probably an hour and a half. It hasn't been a while so it should be fairly cold. Regardless, what I'll do is I will turn it on, we'll see how long it takes for it to get ready to make a cup and then how long it takes to make two 8 ounce cups of coffee. Now one thing that um, I should point out is that these coffee machines actually make some very strange noises. As you can hear now, it's already kind of making like a boiling water type sound and that's because it does have an inner tank and it's boiling the water inside. From my experience, the Keurig machines are much louder than a standard coffee maker. So maybe that's something to keep in mind, but anyway. I will stop talking and we can fast forward to when it actually is ready to go. Alright, now that it's ready, I'll make one cup. right at the 8 ounce mark here. It's not yet ready to make another cup. Now it is, so I'll make the second one. So, it's probably going to tell me I need to add water. Surprisingly enough, it didn't. So, as you can see, it took 2 minutes and 51 seconds for it to make 2 cups. You could say it's a little less, but I stopped it at the point where it makes the click. That signals the end of the brewing process. So, if you're comparing between the time it takes to make 2 cups, they're actually kind of similar. Um, the amount of time it takes for the Keurig machine to heat up is quite a hindrance to how fast you can make 2 cups of coffee, as well as the time it takes for it to pump water from its water reservoir to the inner tank. So, 
Of course, while I didn't actually make coffee in these, the amount of time it would take to make coffee in both of them is about the same. But we do need to remember that with the drip coffee maker, we have to add about a minute or so to actually get it ready to make coffee. However, if you've done that the night before and you have coffee grounds in the actual brew basket, you can just flip the switch and it'll start making coffee, as you saw, practically in instantly. So that's the comparison of the two coffee machines based on the amount of time it takes for them to make coffee. And that'll be the end of this video. Now along with performance comes the question of reliability. Now this is a big debate among the Keurig community about, about how to maintain these machines. And basically I'm going to talk about how the Keurig machine is vastly more complex than your standard drip coffee maker. The drip coffee maker works by the use of a bubble pump. And again, you can see the engineer guy's video to have a better explanation of how this works. But the bubble pump basically has a one-way valve in it. And what happens is it gets hot enough to boil the water. And when the water boils, it forces some in one direction and some in the other. It's boiled inside a tube. The water that goes up the one side then encounters a one-way valve that prevents it from coming back down. So essentially you create a pump with no moving parts. Other than that one-way valve, there is no moving part. Now the Keurig system has at least two pumps and a heating element, as well as computer circuitry which controls which processes happen when. First it needs to move the water from the reservoir to the inner tank. That's one pump. Then the heating element has to heat it up to the correct temperature. Then you hear a second pump force the water down in through the K-cup and into your cup or whatever you are putting the coffee in. So already you have three times the parts and that's not including the computer. Generally your drip coffee maker will have a heating element and a thermostat to turn the heating element on and off if you're talking about basic models. Now the other thing that the Keurig system has are needles. This is too far back, I need to move it forward. If you take out the little K-cup holder, down at the bottom, and I don't believe you can see it, but there's a needle that pierces the inside of the K-cup. The purpose of that is to allow the coffee that's made out, and there's also a needle up in top which pierces the top of the K-cup which lets water in. These needles can clog, and it happens quite frequently, especially if you're using things like hot chocolate that actually don't have a filter. So there's some, there, there are times when you need to clean and maintain your Keurig brewer just because the needles are clogging. And then in addition to that, again, you've got the two pumps, whereas, and those pumps are actual mechanical pumps, you can hear them running. And then also there's that computer circuitry. So the Keurig machine is vastly more complex and in my opinion will probably break earlier than a regular coffee maker. And I have a case in point, and I will illustrate. Take a look at this dinosaur. This is a Norelco coffee maker that I believe is from around 1986. My family has had it since before I was born. This thing still works. Like I said, I got the rival coffee maker for the purpose of making this video. This is our coffee maker that we would have used besides it. I got the rival coffee maker so that way I can show you a modern coffee maker. So like I said, this is probably from around 1986. Still works as fine as the day we got it. So, will the curing system last 20 years or so? I kind of doubt it. However, of course I can't say that's the case, and we haven't had any problems with the Keurig brewer. So, this is all kind of conjectural, but I feel it's worth saying. So now, if you'll move on to the next video, there should be an annotation up right now that lets you click. We'll talk about each system's energy usage and environmental impact.